surgery. So I've done an end block on the right and also on the left on a 60 uh, year old lady, a 63 year old lady uh, with a set of implants from 1988. So just the fact that she has implants that long automatically means that she's ruptured 99.999%. And as you will see, complete end block, 228-23, initials uh, PJ. She's a nice lady from the Pacific uh, Coast area. I cut out the excess skin that really helps uh, as far as medialize and lift. This is the implant and the capsule. If I touch it, I can see it's hard. There are some areas that are so soft. Look at this. You can see it's almost transparent. So if I pass my finger... This is so soft and it doesn't take much to kind of cut into it as I'm dissecting. And look at the irregularity right here. Uh, <coughs> all this inflamed tissue that's on the side, you will see as I cut through, I'm gonna actually cut through this one just so I can show. This is not healthy, good tissue. This needs to go as much as the capsule because this could be a focal rupture and this is a tissue mass that I removed that was in the periphery. Um, so, as you will see as I cut this open, um, just by touching it there is this sliminess from the fatty tissue, but there is this extra uh, irregularity, i.e. Uh, sliminess that you see um, from what appears to be. Now look at this, as I cut this open, see this is the whole point. Someone asked me yesterday, why do you remove excess tissue? If I go like this, you see this? See this discharge right here? This looks like green. Uh, press it. I'm gonna go ahead and press over here. You see, look at this. It's like you're popping a pimple, right? So this is all bad tissue. This has to go, and this I cannot stress enough. You cannot look and see all oh, my my. Look at this. You saw that. Um, so I'm gonna actually go here, just for completeness sake. So look at that. Some more of that. Here. I'm popping a pimple. Look at that again. So as I go like this. Uh, this is all badness because I can feel having been on the operating room since 1998 I can tell just by touching and seeing and six sense certainly what tissue is good and what tissue is bad so again I'm going to show you here look at that stuff coming out uh, it's like a acne pimple and so I'm going to cut this open let me cut this open right here all inflamed angry tissue look at look at this this is scar tissue so I'm going to go in now. You got the point why I need to remove all of this. You can see some more tissue right here. Now some of that is can be fibrocystic disease, but again, this is abnormal tissue. And we'll have the pathologist weigh in on this. This is all scar tissue too. It's hard. It's, it's not healthy tissue. So as I go in, let me go in from here. I'm going to go ahead and use my pickups now as I enter. There we go. Remember, she's been living with this for God knows decades. Uh, the family, nice family, uh, basically a nice patient. They've been researching me for some time. And remember, the whole goal is to let none of this spill into the chest. Remember, this is nothing but badness. Uh, and as I go in, Next, we're going to go in from here. None of this spilled into the chest. This is the gold standard. Now, remember, there are a lot of surgeons who will say, so what if the silicon spills into the chest? Now, remember, that is a big no-no. It is very, it is a catastrophe if the silicon spills into the chest. The whole goal is to do it in a very safe, controlled way. And as you will see, I'm going to go ahead and pull out this ruptured implant. All contained end block. And you can see how it was folded up on itself and look at this look at the color of it and uh, I'm going to go ahead and see uh, I cannot read the make or the model so I'm going to put it here but overall clearly as you can see ruptured um, no implants are safe um, and as you will see if I revert this look at this shell this was resting right against her chest and if I go in, like the scales of a fish, literally, these are razor sharp. See, look at this. And don't tell me implants are safe. You show this to a third grader, like I've said many times before, they will run. The, the implants are not safe devices. And look, 
there this is a different consistency there's a brown tinge to it and this i can actually scrape off so some of this as you will see relatively thick some of this is relatively thin and again very abnormal this is not healthy tissue this is all reactive the body in itself look at the snap the body in itself is trying to contain this um, and look the pain and the misery that this patient has gone through in the meantime you can go ahead and focus on this uh, you know the con procedure this is how I do it uh, the pathology all capsules are 100% of the time sent to pathology to rule out the DIA, LCL, CD30 analysis, rule out lymphoma, rule out malignancy, rule out squamous cell cancer, rule out any abnormal pathology. Microbiology, I take cultures for aerobic, anaerobic, and fungal and send to the microbiology lab to get tested to make sure there is no bacteria or fungal uh, infection. Number three, I return the implants to the patients so the patients know that uh, they have a mental closure and they also confirm what was on the card and there's really no use to that but truly they can see what was the size of the implant what was the make and model there have been so many instances where one uh, implant is of one make like mentor the other one is elegant um, or even no make for example no drains uh, this is how i do the surgery the blood loss has been essentially minimal this is not the time to be doing a lift the patient had a severe contracture as you can see and a lot of inflamed tissue, especially uh, given the fact that you can see a lot of uh, angriness slash inflamed tissue. I take high definition pictures and videos as well, showing the patient the chest wall. And plus, as you can see right here, so there's complete transparency. And then last but not least, the twilight anesthesia. So what I'm going to do is I've changed my gloves. Again, look at this side tissue. This really helps kind of lift the tissue up as well. Again, a lot of... Uh, inflamed tissue in the periphery right you can see these are like small chunks of fatty tissue abnormal and if you look over here carefully this is an area that's very soft this is an area very soft this area is relatively hard so we will see this as i cut and uh, as i go in let me go ahead and go in from the soft area so i don't have to hurt my scissors but there we go All contain end blocks, the gold standard. None of this spilled into the chest. Remember, there could be fluid inside, there could be anything inside. So as I go in, you can hear me cut through. Look how the implant is sitting. It's folded up on itself. I could put my finger in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it up a little bit more. Implants are not safe devices. Both saline and silicone are replete with problems. They rupture, they only cause problems. Uh, and you will see as I pull this out, look at this, the way this is sticking out. This is like a hard shell. So this is, uh, it says over here, Silastic, S-I-L-A-S-T-I-C, 400 cc's. So this is ruptured indeed, as you can see, if I go like this, this is ruptured, all contained. I'm gonna put this here and look at this. This is how hard it is. It's like, and you're gonna hear the crunchiness. Don't tell me this is safe. I hope the FDA is listening. So look at this heart. I'm breaking the shell. And so this is all heart, angry, inflamed tissue. Look at this. And it doesn't take much. You can see my finger going through all contained. Again, this is the, the whole surgery, right? It's all the end block. So there you have it, another explant, the gold standard. No implants are safe, be it saline or silicone, they're not meant to be in the body forever. Let's listen to the FDA. The FDA says this, the implants are not meant to be in the body forever, 10 to 15 years. Number two, they're associated with lymphoma and squamous cell cancer. And number three, the FDA says clearly in their warning, and I want each and every one of you to listen, they say if the implants are removed, the many sign symptoms of breast implant illness are, quote, resolved. Uh, the patient does not suffer. If you listen to the manufacturers, they tell you 
if you have so this is both mentor and arrogant so this is the second warning or the second group if you listen to the manufacturers they'll tell you if someone has silicone implants she should get an MRI at year three and then every two years they're onward so you can imagine uh, since 1988 how many MRIs she should have had uh, so we're looking at approximately uh, uh, 23 33 30, 35 years so we're looking at almost 16 MRIs at least in her lifetime she should have gotten right uh, if she has had implants this long and obviously we will see this morning I talked to a lady she has implants from 2010 and she just got an MRI a few days ago and it shows a rupture on the left side and again this tells you that the implants are not safe devices so going back to the manufacturer they'll tell you that there is something called gel bleed there are problems associated with uh, the implants and these are not meant to be in patients with mental uh, issues like depression, for example, autoimmune issues, patients who are pregnant or nursing, for example, and these are the manufacturer's warnings themselves. And lastly, I say to the many patients, listen to the many other patients who have explanted and listen to all this and see all of this. You will hear and you will see all the badness that are associated with the implants that are temporary gain Breast implant analysis will ultimately affect everyone because remember the implants are not meant to be in the body forever and they will only rupture, be it saline or silicone. And you don't want the silicone to rupture into the chest because then that is a big catastrophe to manage. This lady came all the way from Arizona because she wanted complete and walk and no spillage so that she gets the best chance to bounce back to a normal state of good health minus these toxins. And this is hopefully Time will tell, she's only getting better off. This could not have been done any better. And this is what I say 20 years from now, I cannot imagine an, anyone else doing the surgery any differently or any better. This is Dr. Khan, Executive Plastic Surgery.